Let's explore a few more examples of capacitors. So what we have here is a thunderstorm or a photograph of some lightning and lightning actually can act as a natural capacitor. So inside the clouds, we're gonna have stray electrons that occur during the storm activity and we're gonna get lots of electrons building up in the clouds. And these electrons, what they're going to do is they're going to attract positive charges in the ground or at tall objects nearby. Uh, and then we can kind of see the scenario here where we've got a plate of a capacitor in the clouds or the base of the clouds and then another one in the ground and then the air in between acts as the dielectric. Here's an animation of this. So we've got negative charges that accumulate in the clouds and they attract positive charges in the ground or in tall objects nearby. These charges induce positive charges to accumulate in the ground comparable to the positive plate of a capacitor. The electrostatic field between the clouds and the ground can produce ions and free electrons. Eventually the potential difference okay, becomes so great that the dielectric breaks down uh, and you have an arc or a discharge. Earlier we saw the automated external defibrillator and so inside here we're going to have a capacitor so maybe it's a pretty big capacitor in here and then this capacitor is going to run through the paddles and then on this side this capacitor is going to run we're going to have a battery in here as well and we're going to run through the paddles and then between the two paddles well what happens you, you put the paddle uh, on either side of the heart. So that's the idea. Put one paddle on either side of the heart. So I think one is supposed to go sort of up here and one is supposed to go down here. The theory being that you want that arc to go across the heart. And so we can connect these up in a circuit. Okay, and your heart now is acting as a resistor here. And so the capacitor take some time to charge and then in discharge hopefully you can um, what you want to do is upset the irregular rhythm of the heart so that it then restarts in its normal strong pattern. The last application here is a railgun. So a railgun is a weapon that uses a magnetic field to accelerate a projectile uh, and you need an extraordinary amount of current in order to do this. And so to generate the very large amounts of current, you can use uh, a giant capacitor in order to do that. So in the sketch here, we can see that we have this armature that slides in this axis and the force of the magnetic field is going to move the armature in that direction. So we can see the force. Here it says the magnet uses the Lorentz force and we'll talk more about this in a future session. But basically in this arrangement, all of your magnetic field, your current and your force are 90 degrees to each other. So here we have the, the setup and the force accelerates what's called an armature this way. Well, so here's how this actually looks. The US Navy built one of these things. And in the background here, we can see the capacitors. So in the background are two bays and it's about the size of a shipping container or bigger. These are all individual capacitors. And so if you were to actually want to use this type of weapon and carry it around with you, you also need to bring the power source. You need to bring those capacitors with you. So you load the projectile in here uh, and then on you go. Let's have a look. Here at the uh, um, Naval s and Expo displaying um, the Navy's whole scale um, railgun prototype. A railgun is a gun that uses electricity instead of 
gun propellant to accelerate a projectile. Mm -hmm. And so what's new or exciting about that is it, it gives you much greater velocity than the, the powder guns that we have on ships today, um, which opens up a whole new realm of how we can use uh, a weapon of this type. If you imagine this armature that's, that's, that's being accelerated down the barrel, it's going from zero to Mach 6 in 10 milliseconds. It comes out of the barrel, it hits that atmosphere, and it's going, it's, it's traveling so fast that it, it just sort of ignites. You see the slow motion video, so it looks very dramatic, but if you don't see the slow motion video, it would just look like a quick flash. This is about the size of testing at the small scale. As you can see, something this size will go through six plates of steel before it finally gets stopped. And if you can see what this does, imagine what something like this is going to do uh, when it gets to its target. In the projectile, there will be a section here that will, will have, have the guidance and, 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 uh, so that you can, you can yeah. steer the projectile. And there will be a section where, where you have your, your payload. To fire a railgun, you need pulse power, what we call pulse power. Um, faster based pulse power where you can store up the energy and then release it in about 10 milliseconds. Before we got started, the size of the pulse power that would be required to fire a gun this size was about, about this size. And we've been able to shrink the size of the pulse power for the same amount of energy to fire the gun from this down to this. So as you can see, that's a tremendous reduction in the size of pulse power. We're at the level where we're at sizes that, that are, are reasonable for integrating onto a ship. As you can see, We've demonstrated that if you build it big enough, you can fire it and it works. The next phase of the effort that we're in right now, the next generation after this, you will see an auto loader on the back. You'll see that it'll be, it's being designed for, for shooting multiple rounds per minute. We've worked out all the controls, issues, controls, techniques with the pulse power to be able to fire multiple rounds per minute. Charging, releasing, charging, releasing. That much power is, is quite a tremendous a uh, feat and accomplishment that we're engaged in, in, in proving and demonstrating here in the next two or three years. So there right at the end he talks about charging, releasing, charging, releasing. So it would take a tremendous amount of power to charge up and then to have it release in 10 milliseconds. So I think that's a really cool application of capacitors. All right, that wraps it up for this topic for today. Catch you later.